So there's actually one more thing I want to show you before I get into consuming the web service. As I finish that previous video, I realized you know it'd be good to give you guys one example of using a classification um, uh, formula rather than a regression. So what I want to do here is in our select columns, uh, uh, whatever you call this thing, window or bubble, let's go ahead and include everything this time. So I'm going to uh, delete all these out of here. Actually, you know what we could do is simply kill this select columns altogether and then connect the bike buyer straight to split data since I know that I want to use all of them. So instead of using a linear regression, I'm going to delete that and instead come down here to classification and let's choose, I like decision trees. Um, the decision trees are, they're a nice combination of speed and accuracy. Uh, often neural networks will be the fa will be the most accurate, but often take longer to run. They're a bit slower. Whereas uh, regression, well, no, more like a naive Bayes will be the least accurate. However, they're probably the fastest. Whereas a decision, uh, decision trees based algorithm is somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to pull this one in, connect the dots from here to here. And I took out the um, launch column selector, but actually I really didn't need to. Um, what I want to do, I'm, I'm going to leave it as, I'm going to show you the difference. I can still use a numeric variable with the classification task, but I want to show you how it scores models differently. So all I've changed really is this. I deleted the column selector, that's irrelevant. I'm going to leave the split data, or excuse me, leave the train model. Um, I'm going to leave purchase bike numeric right there where it is and just go ahead and rerun everything. Okay, give this a minute. That was a lot quicker, cool. So uh, let's take a look at, at the bottom three again, how these are different. In the train model, let me show you the difference of what we get. So it's going to show you the different decision trees constructed, which is really kind of cool. Um, when you get into uh, the BI class, Dr. Deans has explained exactly how these decision trees work. So you've got here cars, um, uh, let's see here, and then that goes to two options where we've got the, the biggest thing that differentiates between um, people purchasing a bike is what this says right here is that they have either less than or one car or no cars basically. So that's our biggest factor influencing whether or not they buy a bike. After that, the next biggest factor is whether or not if they now if they have less than one car, it is whether or not they have less than three children. Or if they have on the other side, greater than or equal to one car, the next biggest factor is whether or not their marital status is zero, whether or not they're single. And so it goes through every possible branch of this tree. Okay, so if they have less than one car, if they have less than three, three children, after that, the next biggest indicator is whether or not their um, education is less than this number three, which I think was bachelor's or something like that. I can't remember. So that's what a decision tree looks like. Let's go down to score model though now. Uh, score data set visualize and scroll over so you can see uh, we get two options here. Instead of a simply a scored label of something that looks like this 0.49, you know, something that rounds up to zero, uh, rounds up to one or down to zero, I get a scored label of either zero or one. It just go ahead and goes ahead and does the rounding for us. But really, there's not rounding to be done because that's not how decision trees work. It simply says we predict this as a zero or one, but you also get the probability or the likelihood um, of that scored label, how confident they are in that one. So some of these, and so think of this as, you know, back here, we're not extremely confident that's a zero, right? Because it, it's so close to 0.5. So yeah, we predict it's a no, but we're not super confident about that. Unlike uh, down here, point almost seven, it's predicted as a yes, and we're much more confident about, confident about that than we are that this is a no. So the combination of these two columns is accomplishing the same thing. We predict a no, 
we're not super confident. We predict a no, we're a little more confident. We predict a yes, we're even more confident. We predict a no, but we have very little confidence in that. If we've got to predict something, it's going to be a no, but we're really not sure. So that's how the that's how this works for a decision trees based algorithm. Lastly, our evaluation criteria are different. So let's visualize this. And I really like this chart. Uh, this is our true positive, false positive rates. So as we as we go through our um, it's a good way to explain this. Uh, as we start if, if we if we sort of go with those we're most confident in and start predicting our yes or no, this line right here is how much better we are than a random guess. So the the biggest difference between our um, how accurate our predictions are at the, at between that and a random guess is this point right here where we get um, if we were to predict it looks like almost half the data. We have 0.7 true positives and 0.3 false positives. So if we were to sort in order of probabilities from most likely to least likely, and if we were to predict the first 30-40% uh, ish of the data and, and, and trust those predictions, we're going to be have the greatest difference between accurate guesses and random guesses. Anyway, um, that may have been difficult to <laughs> to follow. But this is the, the way we evaluate quality with a classification based model. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. Now let's move on to consuming these services.